Hello, and welcome to the Black Dice Society. Valentine, as these undead horrors have come stampeding out of the mists, attacking you, your one true friend, Tatiana, and these other strangers that you're coming to know, as you all are pressed here in battle, back to back, you've extended your fingers, and the arms of Hadar have leapt forth, black, shadowy tendrils of energy reaching out in crushing and strangling their undead forms. And as you watch them writhing in pain and the bones cracking in the skeletons and the zombies slowly going limp, you hear a voice echoing from deep inside of you. Do you enjoy this power, child? Yes. Do you crave more? Yes. In time, you will do great and terrible things. You will burn my name across the lands. And what might that name be? If you have to ask, you are not ready to know. <sighs> I'm just going to kind of like uh, try and shake my eyes back to normal because they were like glossed over from using my abilities and just kind of like. <clears throat> I have prepared a helper for you. You embark on a dangerous task. You need something to watch your back. I have someone to watch my back. I said something. I will say I prefer my route, but I don't think I have a choice in the matter. <clears throat> you do not, but you will see my wisdom in time. Besides, Tatiana already has enough to worry about now. Excellent. Do you accept my gift? Sure. Then you are blessed now. In Valentine, at the base of your spine, you feel something move something that wasn't there before and a sensation goes throughout your entire body that is not unpleasant but intensely alien oh well this is definitely a pleasant state of affairs. Hello, Valentine. And is this still coming from just within my skull? This is all inside of your head. But you are 40,000% aware that this is not what was talking to you a moment ago. Excellent. Um, am I able to communicate with it through, like, uh, messaging? Or do I need to speak out loud? You absolutely, you can communicate with it solely internally. Excellent. Hello, I don't believe uh, this is your place. Oh, it most certainly is my place. My name is Tregrum. I am at your disposal. I would prefer the disposing, ideally. I'm uh, rather fond of being alone in here. 
Well, I will do my best not to take up too much room. I wouldn't want to distract you. There is such wonderful chaos happening now. I assume you're uh, what I was spoken to about having my back. <sighs> One does not like to boast, but yes, I will be your very best friend from now on. <laughs> I'm not a fan of having friends. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you should probably duck right now. I duck. <laughs> and sure enough, at that exact second, a sword goes flying over your head from one of the skeletons that got loose from the <sighs> arms of Hadar. Hell. Yes. I hate that you're right. I absolutely hate that you were right. You'll get used to it. <laughs> And with that, hello and welcome to episode two of the Black Dice Society, The Banished Grief. Now, if you've uh, been with us for episode 0.5 or episode one previously, you know that Ravenloft is a dark horror setting uh, for Dungeons and Dragons. It is overtly, usually, gothic horror, although over the course of this show, we will explore many different kinds, such as body horror. Do you understand, though, that oftentimes some of the content that we will get into this series might be disturbing? Uh, we have a system in place for the cast. Uh, I'm aware of everyone's lines and veils, and they have a way of letting me know if something is going too far and uh so if we suddenly in the middle of even mid-sentence change directions maybe because we squeak somebody out but that being said be advised that some of the content will be troubling but with that in mind let us meet our cast starting uh with the now no longer alone valentine Excellent. Hi, my name is Sage Ryan, and today I am Valentine. Uh, Valentine is a reborn aberrant mind sorcerer and apparently cohabitating her own body now. Apparently. Desmond? Desmond is a human ranger who has been inflicted with lycanthropy since as far back as he can remember, which is just nice. And who are you, good sir? Oh, hi. I'm DJ Knight. I play games on Twitch. <laughs> Tatiana? That is I. Uh, hi, I'm Becca Scott. I also play games on the internet and I'm an actor. And uh, here you will find me as Tatiana. I am fiercely protective of my mistress, of course, Valentine. I will do anything for her, and I will hurt anyone who tries to hurt her. I also like these other folks, but just meeting, of course, you see. I like to smash things, and barbarian Ergenazi may not uh, seem like the most smashy of people, but I am. Currently, there is a berserker blade that is in my hands, may or may not be cursed. We'll see what happens. You know, if you lean into it, is it really a curse? I don't believe so. <laughs> also, love this. Love this thing that's happening. I just woke up like this. <laughs> Finn. Hello, I'm Finn, your dump, your drow, blood hunter. But when I'm not playing a vampire on TV, uh, I'm talking to Cypher of Tear. And uh, you can find me all over the internets with shenanigans and japes and whatnot. And also uh, working alongside B. Dave and DJ and other shenaniganry. Uh, no, you, you you go, Dave, because <laughs> I, I like when you get to talk about things. I've talked about this all day. <laughs> Brother Uriah. Uh, hello, I'm Mark Mir. I do voices and video games. Be sure to check out the Mass Effect remaster coming out soon. But for today, I am playing Brother Uriah Macabre, cleric of the grave and priest of the goddess Ezra, Lady of the Mists native of Ravenloft. And last but certainly not least, Nahara. Uh, you are muted, ma'am. Am I still muted? Because Can, I'm not muted on. You're good now. 
Cool. Awesome. One day I will not do this. Hi, <laughs> I'm Nora Ibrahim, uh, aka Norological. You could find me streaming lots of different TTRPGs on lots of different streams. Uh, and here I play Nahara, Fallen Azamar, Undead Warlock, and I am really going to enjoy making Brother Uriah uncomfortable. <laughs> uh couple more bits of housekeeping before we move on. Uh, apologies for the tech snafus last week. I'm aware some people were getting some video lag. Hopefully we have corrected that. I have ordered a much more powerful new computer, but we're still in the midst of a pandemic. I do not know when it will arrive, so I appreciate your patience. Also, just before we went live, uh, we had some catastrophic internet failures. So if somebody drops, we might take a second to readjust. The show will go on. Thank you so very much for your patience. Uh, I also would like to thank our sponsors, Die Hard Dice. There you go. Uh, there are custom sets available for each of our wonderful characters. We're available right now at the link that is hopefully being dropped into chat right now. Uh, you can use code BDS to get 10% off of all of our sets and all kinds of other dope things. Without going into too much detail, I can tell you that the original rollout of our sets last week was a huge success, so thank you all so very much for that and your support. Secret Lab Chairs, also hopefully a link in chat. I love mine. It's like right, like riding around on a couch all day, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, we also have a Patreon. You can get early access to the audio versions of our adventures, our podcast. You can get an exclusive weekly after show and some also some other unique content. We set a sponsorship goal that if we reached it, we would do a bonus episode. And the thing that is leading right now for the bonus episode is what if Nika had listened to them and left ahead of the wedding? What would have happened if we'd taken the road less traveled? I don't know. If that's the episode you want, that's the episode we'll do. But uh, Fighting pit! Fighting pit. But <laughs> possibly consider becoming a sponsor at patreon.com forward slash the Black Dice Society. Last but certainly not least, thank you so much for the fan art. Thank you to the Devil Daisies. Thank you to everybody who uh, submitted. If you post fan art of us, please make sure you use the hashtag Black Dice Society so we can see it because we want to know. If you're going to take the time to draw it, we want to take the time to see it. Now with that, on with our story. You all are here again surrounded by these undead as these tendrils of darkness leap to life crushing and breaking all of them around you and valentine seems almost like she's not even paying attention as this darkness extends out from her and is just as quickly as you all were imperiled your enemies are all defeated and their bodies drop crushed and broken to the ground Did they? What happened? I was about to crush them all into bones. It's fine. See? I've got it. Ah, but I, Valentine, please leave me something to kill next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've... I cast around with my eyes of the grave. Do I detect any further undead? You, you did? You are aware, Brother Uriah, that you are still surrounded. This area is teeming with undead. Oh, I'm, fr I'm afraid it's not over. We're, we're still surrounded. There may be more. Ha! Good is good. I Did mean... they follow you here? Follow who? Those creatures. Did they follow you here? Oh, me? <laughs> no, I've never seen them before in my life, but... Well, is perhaps not whole truth. We were at wedding. Very mysterious man with dark rose emblem. <gasps> sure. I am... Valentine, I am branded. What? Anyway, we came to here, and the things, some came with us. See, well, I, I assure you there's no shortage of undead in these parts. We must, uh, we must try to regroup and- Fen, you're injured. Yeah, uh, getting stabbed really hurt. I can help if you will allow me. Yes, please. Uriah will cast uh, Cure Wounds on Fen. 
Excellent. Uh, Desmond, give me a perception check with advantage. I didn't roll an advantage, so rolling with advantage. If you're, you, if you're using D&D, oh, no. if you're using D&D Beyond, you can right click, right -click. on it and then, yep. It, yep. So I right click, mm -hmm. redid the roll, 21. Uh, Desmond, as you're seeing these bodies laying on the ground and having caught on to a, the fact that a couple of the zombies, even when killed previously, got up again, even as Valentine has decimated them a couple of them move again but an easy thrust from your sword kind of at the back of your neck is stopping them and you realize something some of these zombies are wearing uh the colors of your house they are dressed in the trappings of the people of your land but most of them aren't there's all kinds of different clothing. Some of them are so old that their clothes have just tattered to rags. But there's different colors, different signs and seals. Like, there's no pattern to where these creatures came from. I kind of look around at everybody and just, does no one else notice the bodies? At least some of them are from my home. We were all, many of us, at my brother's wedding. And... That man there, was that, that is someone who is of my kingdom. That man over there as well. But there are many people from many different lands. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like it. My condolences on the loss of your friends. I heal, uh, heal Fen for 10 points of damage. And as he touches Fen's wounds and they close, you see Brother Uriah visibly breathe a sigh of relief. It seems you are among mm. the living then. Yes. Finn and Nahara, my apologies, but... <clears throat> well, and uh, you as well, madam. You all seem to bear the mark of the undead. Does I... that alarm you? Yes. Yes, of course it does. <laughs> well, I, I was mean, alive the, once. The, the, the evil laugh is not really calming me either. That was not my goal. <laughs> now, now, Valentine, just let's be nice to Brother Uriah. He did, he did stick around to aid us. He could have run screaming into the night. That was my first instinct. Scared men, a question for you. You say these beings are undead, but have they come to hurt you? Have they stood up against the same enemies as you? Perhaps you should call them friend until something advises you differently. Indeed, I am inclined to do so, and, and you're all so very familiar. This may sound odd, but... I, I dreamt all of you. Yeah. It was a house. Strange. Valentine, Desmond, and Tatiana, you all have you all have had a day that would be charitably described as horrific. Mm. But here in this split second of sanity, it is true. There's a familiarity um in this concerned face in in this drow and in this asimar that somehow still resonates with undeath their faces are familiar doesn't ring a bell i'm just going to message to tatiana for future reference, when someone asks if we brought the horde of creatures that tried to kill them all, lie. Ah, understood. My mistake, mistress. It's okay. We'll get there. Valentine, uh, we you hear immediately, 
And that is why you need me. She is strong of arm, but perhaps lacks the proper nuance to survive in our world, Valentine. I'm perfectly fine at lying on my own. I look forward to learning from you. I look forward to ripping you out of my skull. Well, that is cruel. If not for me, that beautiful skull would be bouncing along the road like a cannonball right now. You're welcome. Forgive me. Uh, uh, there isn't much time to stand silently. Um, we uh, we should probably not tarry. Uh, uh, Fen, you mentioned yes. that the carnival was near. Yes. Um, quick, out of character. So, would I know this, or should I roll to figure out which way we should? start heading roll survival uh you know yes you had not ranged far from the carnival but in the land of the mist that doesn't necessarily mean anything true true oh that's so much better i'm glad i get advantage 17 finn as you look around here you have no idea where you are and Brother Uriah mentioned being surrounded. In the moment you begin to feel the slightest hint of worry sort of begin to well and take root in your chest, you all hear the wind get much louder. Like, and the mists around all of you grow much thicker. And you see lights dancing off in the distance in all different directions in the very faint hum of an organ playing somewhere mm -hmm. far away. Finn, this is something you've seen happen countless times. Finn just smiles. I believe the mists delivered us instead of us standing around wondering where the carnival is it brought us home is horrible music you Would travel you by fog me yes you travel by weather the mist take me where i need to go <sighs> okay wait uh, explain. Mists are means of conveyance? For some, yes. yes. Clearly you are not from these lands, but outlanders <laughs> are surprisingly common here. People get swept up by the mists, taken where the mists will. It is a force of nature, nothing that can be done about it. Right, so which way is back? We have important business. We must avenge friend's death. Fen looks at Brother Uriah with that kind of... They'll learn. Brother there, Uriah shakes his head softly in agreement. There's no way back right now. But what I can do is take you to the carnival. Get us sustenance. Get our bearings. Or would you rather keep fighting the zombies? I leave it to mistress to decide. And angel woman with wings. Yes. My name's Nahara, Ooh. by the way. Oh, yes, Nahara. It's a lovely name. You are uh, in favor of going to this carnival? Well, I can't imagine us being safe where we are. And if there's strength in numbers and there's more people there, then I'm sure it would be a good idea to find some lodging yes i i, I quite agree uh, l l let us continue our conversation in place of safety yes yes i, I don't like, think we should spend any more time here i'd like to just reach out a hand to shake nahara's i extend mine out valentine you and i, I have something in common don't we 
And I just wink back to her. We do. Uh, hmm. Desmond, I am very sorry that such a joyous occasion was cut short by such an awful tragedy. Thank you. I'm just looking forward to finding out what happened. Finn, Brother Uriah, and Nahara, give me perception checks. And Finn, you can give it to me with advantage. All right, team. Ten. Seventeen. Twelve. Nahara, you notice Desmond is absolutely covered in blood. Valentine doesn't have a speck on her. She looks like she walked out of the banquet to stand in this exact spot. He is doused in blood. Tatiana looks like she's been in a fight, but on her back there are red raised angry welts of what looks like a fresh brand of a black rose right in the middle of her shoulder blades. Desmond, I'm... Forgive me for being too forward here, but I think if we're going to find any lodging, you might be alarming to some people right now. That's true. I should probably wipe down a little bit. I tried earlier. Apparently not well enough. I, I don't have anything injured. to help you, but... I was injured the, I was injured in the battle a little bit. Uh, I think I'm fine for now, but... This was from before. Oh. Uh-oh. <clears throat> well... Desmond! How did Nika die? I don't know. How do you think? Was it the man on the horse? I'm hoping so. But you don't know? No, I don't. It is possible you killed our friend, yes? If you think it's possible that I killed her. Sorry, mistress, I know I did the thing again. No, please. Go on. You were present. You watched our last exchange before the wedding. And you think I could kill her. I don't think it was the you we look at now. But I think... I think perhaps... Uh, I should stand watch over you at night for your own safety. If you so choose. Okay. Uh, again, I, I really, really think we should be moving on. Um, they are yeah, getting lead closer. Lead the way. Let's. Oh, come, come. Finn starts leading them toward the carnival because as far as she's concerned, she's going home. Yes, Finn. Once the mist close, it becomes completely clear to you which way to go. It is like only really one corridor remains open as in all other directions. There is just mist and dancing lights and this haunting music that you all hear. After you walk for what might be five minutes, it might be a half hour. Those of you that are familiar with the Lands of the Mist are accustomed to this. For the Outlanders, it's an odd set of experiences. You feel like you've gone almost nowhere, yet you've been traveling for such a long while. And then up ahead, you start to see what looks like a ramshackle a uh, hastily thrown together series of booths, uh, tents, um, very small things. That some of them have one person inside, some of them have four inside. And further past them, probably another hundred yards or so, you can see a very large um, big top tent 
that is motley colors that are faded and pale that actually seems more ominous in, in the night in surrounded by the mists. But as you approach, you can make out a sign hanging over this small, um, not necessarily that small, this uh, assemblage before you that just says, handwritten hastily, Litwick Market. And you can see there is a path right through the middle of it, heading towards the carnival. What would you all like to do? Love a carnival. Mm. Finn just smiles and, and actually looks to Brother Uriah. Care to walk with me? Yes, of course. It's just as I remember it when I was a boy. Nothing's changed about it, but it's been decades. To you, yes. I see. Yes. Uh, Will uh, will the master of the carnival be willing to give us shelter? If I ask, yes. I would appreciate it. Oh, come now, Uriah. I didn't let you get eaten all those years ago to just turn you over now. Of course, yes. Uh, once again, I'm in your debt. But what a strange happenstance to, to encounter you uh, and the people from my dream for us all to be together here and now. Well, you know, because of where we both hail from, the mist will do as it will, and who knows, maybe this was meant to be. I pray that it is Ezra's will and not the will of some darker forces. Well, you know where we are. All too well. Are the rest of you saying anything um, as you approach this Litwick market outside no, of the I'm carnival? but I'm certainly listening. <laughs> <laughs> Give me perception, Valentine. Actually, Excellent. Valentine, you have gained proficiency in perception. So you can add Excellent. your full proficiency bonus. Because as you sort of open up you hear that small voice of Tregram speak up. Ah, yes, you would like a little more insight. I would be happy to help you filter through all of the noise and chaos and distractions that filter in to help you pick out just the best parts. All right. It's a 17. <laughs> Assume you heard everything they just said. Excellent. Also with a 17, you hear whispering in activity up ahead in Liquid Market. Like people are essentially aware of the fact that new patrons are coming. Like you hear uh, stands opening up like big sticks coming out and kind of pushing out an overhang over the walkway um, kind of pots and pans clanging uh, incense being lit like they're definitely preparing for you all to walk through here I put a arm out for Tatiana looks like things are just getting started do we think it is safe? I have never been to a carnival before. Should I be ready for fighting? No. Been... Oh, uh, yes, of course. I, uh, I mean, I have been to small carnivals, just never. No, I've never been to a carnival. Do things stay relatively peaceful around here? For the most part. Of course, unless, of course, you try to cheat one of the carnies. Yes, of course. How long have you been with them? A while. You also hear a sad puppy off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> we must help this puppy. <laughs> I'm like, new mission, side quest, help the sad puppy. Um, Tatiana, the moment you sort of say mm. out loud, um... Is it safe here? I don't know what to expect. All of you 
hear voices start coming from the market, from no one in particular. You're aware of people moving around in things, but it just sort of echoes out from nowhere in particular. Oh, we have whatever you wish for here, whatever you like. We have many wonders and desires you cannot find anywhere else. Yes, we can tell you secrets. Desmond, what happened to your mother or your brother? Nahara, you could learn what came before. Or Tatiana, what comes after. Valentine, who killed everything you ever loved? Uriah, who you really serve. And all at once, all at once, Finn, who really rules the carnival. And then there's silence. I, I shall brook no blasphemy. I, I, I want none of this, these lies. I'll take some blasphemy. <laughs> how did they, but how did they know? If it's, it can't be, if it was a parlor trick, how would they know? I don't know about your life, but it's not exactly an underground secret that my entire family was very publicly murdered, so I'm not terribly concerned. Uh, mistress, are you sure that we can trust them, you know? Oh, no! <laughs> Someone may be after you. Oh, dear, I, I'm so sorry. Your, your entire family? Yes. I That's correct. Answers. Thank you. The only one here who doesn't trust anything about this? No, not at all, but uh, did something remind you of the dream that we have had? Seeing everyone here reminded me of the dream we had. Yes, yes, but questions, questions that we asked, uh, that's what they, they offer to answer, these voices. Aren't you curious to find out? I want to find out. I'm curious, but also cautious. Nahara, when you say, don't you want to find out, all of you here, and a lantern lights up at one of the stalls, maybe 20 feet inside, and you see a scarved woman, woman, she is hunched in her skin is mottled green and warty. She's got big tusks that come down over her top lip. And she leans heavily on a gnarled walking stick. I can answer your questions, Nahara, if you will meet my price. What is your price? Oh, what are you offering me? I must say my standard fare you cannot give. I usually like oh memories of first kisses, the swelling in a mother's heart when she first holds her newborn baby, the bitter sweet sorrow of parting and yet it seems your pantries are bare <laughs> what can yes, you, you did trade if you did know anything about me you would know that i can't trade any of these things so name your price mm. what brings you joy tell me i close my eyes and try to think back on any joyous memory you Am tell able to you tell me what's what's comes to nahara's mind is joy joy is a fleeting and many-headed thing. Perhaps it is something that truly happened to her. Perhaps it is simply a fond daydream. What 
he's joyful for Nahara. I have a vague longing to hold someone's hand, a certain person. And I just can remember feeling sunshine on my face. And that's it. I can't remember anything else. Mm, yes, that will in fact do. And you see a uh, gate creaks open. And she says, in exchange for this memory, I will tell you what has come before, and perhaps I might give you the tiniest taste of what comes after. Come, come, sit, sit. And she does kind I'm of... Kind of <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just saying, okay. she does sort of like go in and just like plop down... <sighs> On some pillows that she has set up. Yeah, you know how people like tuck in their clothes when they go to sit down, but I like kind of flurl out my wings <laughs> so I'm like comfortable sitting. As it, Nahara sits, as goes to sit down, Brother Uriah just leans in and says, Nahara, I beg of you, be cautious. Uh, what I, I know that I... I'm weary, but how could I not want to know? I understand, but bargains entered into in this land are not so easily broken. As far as I know, I have nothing else to lose. <laughs> Seems if she trades in memories, Nahara has very little to give. <laughs> it's true. This old woman looks up at you, Tatiana. And she says, ah, your memory's far richer. Your blue skin is a tapestry of scars and trauma that you bear so proudly. Thank you. Would you like to know not just who, but what pursues you now? Who has blessed you with his mark? And before you can answer, Tatiana, from behind you, another booth, like, gets pulled open. And you see what at first you think is a very tall tiefling. And it takes a second for you to recognize it. That's, that's not a normal tiefling. He stands about seven and a half feet tall and has very large horns that curve backwards. And he goes, oi, 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 hag. No, no, taking it all for yourself. Yes, Tatiana, I too could answer this for you. And she reaches, the hag reaches out and takes your hand, Nahara, and says, yes, well, this one is mine. You all hear me. This one is mine. Fine, if you all can observe if you wish, or make your own bargains. And this towering mm. tiefling looks at you, Tatiana. It's not often that you run into sentients that are taller than you. And he goes, <sighs> oh, what you say then? I'm accustomed to getting that response. And as you look at him in his face, he is beautiful, actually. As you look into his eyes, Tatiana, it does get a little hard to think straight. <laughs> Uh, Don't you put a hand on Valentine's shoulder to stand, uh, not <laughs> <clears throat> swoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll be all right. <laughs> yes, maybe once more with your words. Hello. Mm. Damn it. Uh, would you would you fancy a cup of tea, ma'am? I think I, good. I got something that should fit in Air Genasi's palette. Yeah, and he does turn and start rummaging through some things. While he's doing this, 
The hag reaches forward and she hands you a small crystal, Nahara. And she says, Deposit the memory, hence, and we shall begin. I just slowly look down at it and contemplate that this is the last thing that I have left to hold on to because everything else was already taken away from me. But I have to know. And so I do as she says. And you become aware while you're holding on to this, Nahara, that that sensation, the longing doesn't depart. But it's the memory of the warmth that you are hearkening back to, that is what goes into the crystal. The peace and contentment, the connection, all goes in. And she takes it, and she just looks at it for a second, and you see she drops it in a cauldron behind her, and you hear it clatter over what are probably many, many more such gems. And she reaches out both of her hands to take yours and says, Shall we begin? Reaching my hand out. As she takes your hand, the first thing that you notice is the power in her hands. She seems like this hunched old worn thing. But although she doesn't hurt you when she holds on, you become quickly aware of the fact that if she didn't want you to get away you probably couldn't (laughs) and she looks at you for a moment and her eyes begin to glow with a bright blue and a third blue eye opens on her forehead that all of you can see and she goes ah falling falling for so long Again and again. How many times have you done this? Even you don't remember. No. I lose count at 13. (gasps) But you have a chance now, child. This could be your last incarnation. The problem is, you are not whole. What do you mean? You are not just you. You are only a piece of yourself. You must find a way to reclaim the others. But, (gasps) oh no. He knows. He knows. Uh, Ooh. And she jumps back and lets go of your hand. And she, like, fumbles into the container and knocks it over. And she desperately scrambles for the crystal you gave her. And she picks it up and she just, like, pushes it back to your chest, Nahara. Take it. Well, I, wa- I want no part of this. No, no. What? I'm, no, I'm, you promised you'd tell me. Who is he? The, the, the deal is closed. The, the shop is closed. And she pushes well, you out and pulls her thing back down. <laughs> And the other tiefling goes, Oh, sorry about that. I never seen her react as such. And you see multiple creatures kind of lean their heads out of booths and things and all start looking at Nahara. There are elves and satyrs and boggins and pixies and all manner of fey but all of them seem strange somehow like all the elves are a darkish gray in color kind of with sunken in cheeks the satyrs all look kind of grizzled and worn all of them look very worse for wear is this creature behind you tatiana says Oh, but a deal, still a deal, though. So if you want to proceed, I'm willing to. 
To me or uh, to uh, oh. uh, Nahara? Oh, no. I don't know what it was she seen with your winged friend over there. And honestly, I don't want to know. I can't be compelled to testify. I go with you. Yeah, right. I and just he- like to message and just be like, <sighs> remember to be prepared to kill the hot one. I turn uh, quickly as the tiefling hopefully has turned to lead me somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I turn down to Valentine and bend down and say, Slap my face quickly. Uh, I slap her. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Be prepared to kill. Got it. <laughs> don't you know? Don't don't jump to it, but keep it on the table. Okay. I also then just kind of like touch her cheek and just go. Good luck. Treg- Thank you, my lady. Tregram's voice pops up in your ears again. You are fascinating this will be such a joyous partnership valentine thank you do you know it seems like maybe not the time oh but here's the problem you don't know how much i have to offer you if you simply wait to ask you'll miss out on so many wonderful opportunities Fine, fine. He's probably not going to kill your friend anyway. Do you know something? Many things. Do you know something about the hot tiefling that is taking off with my only friend? You should ask the drow. I realize you can't see that I'm making air quotes around drow, but hopefully it's implied. About the nature of this lit wick market, she can inform you, and you will weave greater ties of fellowship that will be of use later on. I turn to Fen. Seems like you might know more about uh, this place here than the rest of us. And uh, my only existing human that I care for is currently taking off with a large devil man. Uh, Is there any insight you could potentially provide? Ben looks down at her nails and then back at Valentine. Oh, so now you want to listen to me. Yes. Oh, he's fine. He just flirts with anything that can move. And Tatiana is more his style. She'll be fine if she remembers how to talk. Oh, no promises there, but... And she's not a devil, man. I'm sure you've seen tieflings before. I don't think that I would describe this man as uh, your run-of-the-mill tiefling. No, but he's not a devil either. I can assure you he is no devil. I've seen them. I hope you're right. Oh, besides, if any harm does come to Tatiana, you would answer to me. I like that. Hmm. Would it make you feel better if I went and knocked on the door and reminded him of who he will speak with if anything does happen to her? Oh, I wouldn't want to interrupt. Well, it's not interrupting if we're making sure they're safe. I could stand to peek by and see what happens. You stay here. You'll be able to see me. Fine. Uh, Fen goes and knocks gently. Uh, <clears throat> busy. <laughs> I know that you're busy in there. A word before you are too busy to come to the door. A moment later, from down near the base of the tent, the door, the flap kind of like flaps open, and you see he just like pokes his head out and looks around. He's like, Oi, how am I supposed to do legitimate business if you? And he sees it's you, Finn, and he goes, uh, Ooh, <clears throat> Lady Finn, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm not stopping you from doing legitimate business. Just 
delivering a slight reminder that they are here as my guests. Do you, are you clear what that means? Oh, do you mean these guests of you or guests of the carnival proper? Consider it both. Well, that does make things different and perhaps less fun, but trans... Oh, have, have fun, just if any hair is harmed on her blue skin or a hair out of place, I will come to see you. you Hello, <laughs> I uh, also hear conversation. <laughs> I will kill him <laughs> if it's needed, but Finn, I very much appreciate concern. <laughs> Oh, you're not from here, though, Tatiana. I've got you. It, right. It, okay, you know, it's it, true. It's it. For, for you get a, the first time a treatment. And you see Finn, he looks at you and smiles, and you see his fangs get visibly smaller when he says that. Good. And I smile and mine get longer. Uh, you will make sure the boss lady knows that uh, I was cooperative, right? Cooperative and gentlemanly as always. Never let otherwise be said. <laughs> and he pulls the tent back closed. Brother Uriah, having witnessed both the hag hastily ejecting Nahara and this odd creature taking away Tatiana, what is Brother Uriah doing during all of this? You are muted, Brother Uriah. Cool. Please, that's Brother Uriah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brother Uriah. Uh, Brother Uriah actually approaches uh, Desmond uh, and just uh, sort of gingerly comes up to him and says, Excuse me, uh, uh, Desmond? Yes. You said you were injured. I, I fear I've exhausted my spells for the moment, but I am trained as a healer. I could... Take a look at them. It's best you clean those wounds, especially if you receive them from the undead. They could be prone to infection. Okay. I appreciate that. Of course. Uh, I'll make a medicine roll, I guess. Because as I mentioned, all spells are gone for right now. Being first level is so fun. Uh, <laughs> squishy babies. That's a, that's a seven on the medicine roll. So uh, I rolled low. What you do know, Brother Uriah, is two things. The wounds that you just saw him get with your own eyes are already beginning to knit. That's not possible. It's the uh. he's already recovered more than any man should have been able to. You also know, although not unlike Tatiana, his body is a tapestry of scars and wounds. There's no sign of any damage on him that should have resulted in all of the blood you saw on him. That's not his blood. Uh, as Uriah begins probing the wounds and then seeing they're probably even healing in front of his eyes, he sort of steps back and goes, Ah, uh, yes, I, uh, I assume this is a result of your aforementioned condition? Yes. yes Something um, like that. You, you do have a quite, quite, quite a bit of blood on you. That happens on occasion. I, I assume this was from uh, one of your foes. I would hope so. You'd hope so. You, you, you're not sure. Not at all, brother. Not at all. Uh, I see. Which is uh, rare for me at this point. I've had this infliction for a good amount of time. I'm used to having control fully. So this is just as interesting for me as it is for you. Believe me. If you are from somewhere other than here, you, you should know that those, those afflicted with the, your condition uh, very rarely maintain control here. That's good to know. Yes. 
And I appreciate your help right now. That's probably a good memory to have. Of course. If I can't have control, then I can remember my friends, right? Yes, yes. I, I, I should be able to uh, help you more fully uh, after some rest and uh, meditation upon the teachings of Ezra. But uh, yes, well, I'll, um, I'll just let you... Um, would you like a, I have a, a, a handkerchief if you wish to dab away some of that blood? I'll use some. I've got enough clothes on. I can take something off and just kind of rub. Of course. Rub it off. Course. I'll, be, I'll yes. be fine. Thanks. <laughs> yes. Mm. I'd like um, to message Desmond. Please do. You may be uncertain, but I assure you that if you did kill Nika, I'll find out. And chuckles to himself. If I killed Nika, by all means, find out. Because I would love to know. Then I have some conversations to have with a few people. <laughs> when Desmond goes quiet when he's doing the message, uh, Brother Uriah sort of feels, feels the need to sort of fill the silence and um, so you, um, uh, you, you, you said you were at a wedding earlier? <laughs> yes, it was my brother's wedding. Oh, well, congratulations to him. Not quite. No? I wouldn't say as much as congratulations at this point. Oh, um, things didn't go well. Condolences, the word you're looking for. Oh, that's a good one. Been offering quite a, quite a lot of those, <clears throat> but, uh, I'll offer them again. I appreciate it. And also I feel that with this place, there may be a lot more condolences to go around. I don't trust anything about this place. Your instincts are sound, sir. Ta Tatiana, inside this tent is a combination of early 20th century spiritualism in Moroccan vice den. <laughs> there are mm -hmm. pillows all over the floor. There is a very <laughs> low uh, standing table uh, with an odd bubbling contraction with contraption with two hoses attached to it. Uh, there are braziers of different perfumes that hang heavy in the air, but it's not unpleasant. And he walks over and picks up the tube attached to this, and you see he inhales sharply and blows out a smoke ring in the form of a heart. I have, you have offered me information and you are just a normal creature and I will get this information from you same way I will get from anyone. You give it to me or I will take it from you. You know what being looks for me? Oh, uh, if I'm not a forthcoming, you promise to force it out of me? <laughs> I want to uh, <laughs> playfully kick his feet out from under him. Hopefully mm. he falls onto some pillows mm -hmm. and then I will <laughs> straddle him and put one arm across his neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. All right. Um, it... What is your name? <clears throat> Carador. Carador? Yeah. It's a fine name. It's not not, not Carador. <laughs> you know, normally, uh, uh, oh yeah, just keep that elbow right there. That's you. That lets you know you're alive. That does. Um, <clears throat> you know. I tighten it. Uh, you see, he kind of like puts one hand on your arm, like he's about to ask you to stop, and he's like, "Right, okay." <clears throat> 
Miss Finn out there asked me to give you the friends and family treatment, so I'm going to give you better terms than I usually do. How about you don't got to give me nothing right now? Let's just say you'll owe me a favor somewhere down the road. I'm gonna stand up off of him. I think that this is maybe what you might call a trick. I don't know this place, but my friends seem wary to provide such exchanges. I would need more terms as to what type of favor this is. I cannot write blank uh, 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 contract. He looks visibly disappointed when you get off of him and kind of scrambles <laughs> and kind of scrambles to his feet and he goes, <clears throat> you're right to be hesitant. Um, it is a place of trickery and fine print and maybe if I were a lesser fay, I might take advantage of your naivete. But here's one thing that you can always count on here in the land of the mess, my lady. Self-interest. Everyone will always look out for themselves. And it's good for me to stay on our good side, because that means I'm on our good side. And honestly, it behooves me to stay on your good side. So here's what I promise. When I call in that favor, and even I don't know when that might be, I promise not to ask you to do anything that will offend a lady's warrior sensibilities. I like this aesthetic you got going here. I won't ask you to do anything uncharacteristic, eh? <laughs> How about this? I have chances to say no to first two favors. Does that mean you... I will do one favor, but I can say no. You have three chances. But does, does that, that make sense? Does that mean if you turn down one and two, you gotta do the third one? Da. Da. He holds his hand out for you to shake it. First terms of what you give me, I must make sure it is worth very good offer. You understand, when Tatiana does something, it is not done lightly. Oh, but I, the problem you there is to me, once I say out loud what it is I gotta say, and then you're like, no, that's not worth it, and you lose, leave, and then I done told you, you say, and then that's a loss for me. This is why we say before we shake hands. So... A being is looking for me, has put a mark on my back. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, just knowing about it. You can't just give me who he is. You must give me his weakness. I will. Only if you promise me... To now this is escalating. Yeah, now we're negotiating. You must never, ever, ever reveal to him that I'm the one that told you. Because it could be a bit of a Tatiana. problem for me, you know. Tatiana offers her hand. And he sh you. shakes it. And when you shake his hand, you feel heat in the palm of his hand. Like it, a slight burning in the, between the palms. And he holds it up, and there's a little circle burned in the palm of his hand and yours. And he's like, Dale. So, that fella back there, his name is Lord Soth. He is a tremendously powerful knight and a dark lord of his own domain, which... Quite frankly, I'm not quite sure how it is you encountered him anywhere other than there. But, and he looks at you for a second and his eyes start to glow green. Mmm, he's mocked you. He's looking for you. 
he will find you. And honestly, if he does, you should probably try and run for your life. What was it he said to you? He'd give you a warrior's death when you'd earned it. Yeah, is what he said. Well, if you ever think about going to look for him, which would be quite foolish, I might add to you. I can't say I recommend it, but a deal is a deal. He's in the domain of Sithicus. At least it's supposed to be. If he's not in Sithicus, maybe you find something there that'll help you hurt him in a meaningful way. But his weak point, believe it or not, he's got the same weak point I've got. His tender heart. He might look so menacing on the outside. But he's just a sad, lonely little boy on the inside. I can relate. Hmm. I bet you can. Most of the things you're going to run into here in the mist now that you're visiting are kind of, shall we say, irredeemable. And he flashes you a very large smile. But maybe not with that one. I can't say it'd be worth your life to try. He's just as likely to gut you as listen to you. But maybe there's something in him that can be reached. Irredeemable. Everything here. Most but, everything. But you say these dark lords, they cannot leave their domains? How did he do it? Unfortunately, that's beyond even my power to observe, but... And he kind of like looks off at nothing and the glow gets brighter and he says, He didn't do it alone. Is that all you know? Well, I think that was quite a lot, really. You know, uh, he was this, like, glorious chap, but he let the glory go to his head, and it kind of led him down the wrong path. And now he's cursed yeah. by it and feels bad about it. And if you see him, you should run. Okay. Until I have better knowledge, I go to this place that you tell me of, this... This place where he is from, Sithicus. Yeah. Until I go there and I learn how to break him, I will run. But I must tell you, it's not in my nature. Well, I think it's good advice, though, you know. And uh, I personally would like to see you live a good long time, yeah? Duh. Nothing. I have one more question for you, Kerator. Nothing as beautiful as you should be lost in the mist for all eternity, I don't think. No, it will not happen. I will escape here, me and my mistress. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> my other question is, what is in this pipe? And she goes over <laughs> and takes a puff. Uh, make, Tries to blow make, a heart. Make a con save. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna get you. Eleven. Do, I'm gonna get you. Do it for, okay, eleven, and then give me. Uh, give me what? What do I want? Because I'm pretty sure. Well, does you correct me if I'm wrong? She doesn't seem like a lady that's got any ranks in performance, or does she? <laughs> actually uh proficient in it because uh my time in the fighting ring could be classified that way as a gladiator then give me a performance check oh 24 it's it, you tell me what it looks like because it's perfection it's better than you thought you could do so you tell me what what shape tatiana blows out Okay, so in the fighting pits, I mean, after hours, all the gladiators sort of hang about. She has lungs of steel like every other part of her. And uh, she's also an air genasi, so can manipulate air. And uh, she inhales so deeply that, like, the pipe, the hookah, runs out of material. And she just 
blows. He's like caught in a tunnel of heart-shaped clouds leading back to her as he's lifted slightly. Uh, Have the cast levitate upon him <laughs> with this. Absolutely perfect. You lift him off his feet uh, <laughs> with your shower of smoke hearts. And he just goes, <laughs> oh, just do me a favor, love. Stay alive. I think in the time to come, you and I need to spend a lot more time together. I see no one now. Meanwhile, outside. <laughs> <laughs> Fade. I think. <laughs> outside. Just like you all heard the hasty opening up of a lot of these stalls, you begin to hear the hasty closing of a lot of these stalls. You hear signs coming down, curtains being drawn, flames being extinguished, and you hear the ground rumble as something very heavy is coming your direction. Like thum. Thoom, thoom, Finn. It is a familiar booming presence to you. To the rest of you, it is no such thing. <laughs> Tatiana, you are otherwise <laughs> occupied. <laughs> smoke hearts, smoke hearts. Smoke hearts, smoke hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, Finn what? looks up and it's just, hmm, it's about that time. About that, about that time? About that time for what? Oh, it's it's nothing. You'll be fine. No, no, please uh, do tell us what, what what's what's happening. Oh, just a friend coming to check on the closing down. A friend. friend. A friend. As she says so we're that, okay. For now. As she says that, you can see up ahead some of the tents and booths begin moving, like something massive is moving between them, coming your direction. You can't be serious. I'm very serious most of the time. Brother this Uriah. Is the oh, go on. This is a friend. This is a friend of yours. This is no, nothing to gawk at. We should all be as calm as you right now. It would behoove you, yes. Behoove us, behoove. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I know I'm a drow and all, but I am educated. No, I, I trust you. I trust you implicitly. You are the one that knows your way around here. And I, if you say this is a friend of yours, okay. All right. This is fine. This is fine. A moment later, around the corner, you see the largest man you've ever seen in your life. He stands easily two to three heads taller than a normal man in twice as wide. It is I like Tatiana had just waited five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless she's going to be in there all night. He, he looks like he is absolutely carved out of concrete, um, but he's probably eight and a half feet tall, 500 pounds. He's got a black sort of one piece strap over his shoulder and wears heavy fur boots. And is carrying a giant mallet that looks like you would use for a strong man test of strength. And he sort of stands there and he looks around for a second and he looks down and goes, Wagwan Finn. I'm back. What, what are you doing? Why, why are you scaring people? No scaring people, Finn. What's it to me yeah. if they go and scurry out of the way a half grum half giant? Well, my associates aren't used to such wonders as our home. He looks down and he goes, Ah, oh, new people. And he kneels down and he goes, You can refer to me as Eremos, the half giant. And he extends a hand out to you, Valentine. In like, your your hand is like almost just on one of his fingers. And he goes, 
pleasure to meet you, mom. Uh, you are muted, Valentine. Pleasure as well. And he learns and looks at you, Nahar, and he goes, uh, Demise, deceive me as a real live angel amongst us here. Hello. And he's like, and he holds a hand out for you too to shake. <laughs> and he goes, Finn, what about these other boys here? Look how scared this one is. A scared boy. And he just like slaps you with the back of his hand, brother Uriah. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Very good. Very, very oh, good. Very amusing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Moose, you remember I told you about this when I saved him. <gasps> the wee boy. That's him, no. Yeah, he's grown up. Look. Ah, uh, he looks like he missed a couple meals. He done. Hey, why are you so scrawny, here, boy? <laughs> we'll feed him. We'll feed him. Don't worry. We we cannot all be blessed with your impressive stature, sir. I saw if you can. I, and he flexes, and again, his arms. He's got forty-inch biceps. He's he almost impossibly big. He's like, mm, hey, hey, you never seen nothing like this in your travels, have ya? Hey. Are you, are you the one that the woman said, oh, he saw, and that's why she got scared and, and well, refused me? Well, no. well, well, um, dog. Huh? No, he's, no, no. Oh. I mean, somebody making trouble for you, cause I'd thump every head out here if I got to, if they making ruckus. No, no mm. trouble, no mm. trouble. I just, that, that woman, Fen, I don't know if you, I didn't catch her name, but that woman who I made a deal with was going to tell me about my life. And then I, I gave her a memory, like I asked. And then she said, like she asked and then, she got scared, said, oh, he saw, and then pushed me out. And so I thought that that was you, naturally. Mm, no. I don't know why she might have reacted so. But if she rescinded the deal, that ain't something these people are in the habit of doing. Maybe you got lucky, huh? You get your memory back. I, I did. Mm. But I, I really wish I would have known more. Well, there's all sorts of answers and wonders and spectacles to be discovered at Carnival. Maybe you'll learn something along the way, but, um, you there, boy. And he turns and looks at you, Desmond. Ah, a bit of a strong boy. I, I see you sizing me up, wondering where you take out my knees, huh? In this place, you gotta be protective of yourself, so nothing against you. I just gotta be ready. Ah, uh, only in all places it'd be like that. Look out for you and yours. My name's Aramos, and you, he actually shakes your hand, and his hand wraps around almost up to your forearm <laughs> when he shakes your hand. It's a pleasure. Hmm. Uh, I was told this one more is supposed to be a big blue gal, which as well. Ah, uh, she's off with her. I our... stumble out of the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, never mind. That's like less time than we thought. <laughs> that's no the, judgment's here. That's that rage, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let that lay there. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, as have as have I think um, counts as long rest, yes? <laughs> 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 I don't know. Where are you resting? <laughs> It's true. I'm like, you might have spent hit dice. I'm not who for not. That's none of my business. Uh, you, Tatiana, you see when you come out, he stands up to his full towering height and he goes, well, look at you. And she a beautiful thing. Uh, I know. Hmm. Uh, the, uh, sorry, missed introductions, uh, Tatiana. I have giant man. He, he looks down. He goes, Airmos, the half giant. Yes. Uh, why don't we? Why don't I escort uh. you all over to the carnival proper? 
You need to get out of here out of the Litwick market. Uh, you're going to come up with your purse a bit lightened and maybe burdening other wheeze. And it's yes, for the best. Need to get gone. You know and uh, Finn climb up on his shoulder. Yeah, absolutely, Finn. Like he so much so he kind of like <laughs> lowers his arm for you because he know before you even ask, and sort of like puts you up where you can see out over everything. And Finn, from your higher vantage point, you can see all over Litwick. The eyes of the various shop owners and patrons like duck down and looking. Like everybody knows to stay out of Eremos's way. And he just sort of like looks around and kind of goes, mm, eh, I'll re we go then, uh. And he just starts walking back, leading you all down towards the carnival. And believe it or not, although mm -hmm. we are a little bit early, this seems like an excellent time to actually take our break. Uh, but before... Yes. We switch off. As I said, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash The Black Dice Society. Uh, I apologize that some places it's The Black Dice Society, some places only Black Dice Society, because we couldn't get the same things everywhere. Uh, we are almost to our funding goal to have a bonus episode, but one of the uh, tier options that is available is a shout out in the episode. So at least here in the first week, I'm going to shout out by name uh, our Dark Lords on our Patreon, which are Alan Zozo, Aurelia Rolf, shout out to Ari, uh, Forrest S. Grafumbly, Michael Skidmore, Robert Trim, Robert, uh, sorry, Robert Tremarco, Roger Ray uh, Thomas, another homie. Shout out to Thomas in Zort One. So thank you all very much for your support and literally making it possible to do what we do. Woo! Thank you so very much. Uh, and with that being said, we will be back in 10 minutes. Don't go nowheres.
And we are back. Thank y'all. As you all follow Air Most Ave Jane uh, <laughs> up towards the carnival, the mists begin to part, and you can see a clearer example of the, the full scope and scale of the carnival. It's maybe 300 yards from end to end, but Brother Uriah, you've seen this before. It's like a snapshot of what you remember. What does the carnival look like? It's exactly as I recall it when I was a boy. There, that massive tent, multicolored, yet somehow unwholesome. The fabric darkened with innumerable stains and smoke. And there, there, yes, the house of horrors, I would call it from when I was a boy. Leering faces painted on wood, cracked and peeled. Here and there, performers running, fire eaters, jugglers, food stands of all sorts, strange smells coming forth. Uriah actually begins to shrink into himself a bit and unconsciously begins drifting towards Fen, even though she's up on the the giant's shoulder. Uh, would Fen notice this ba based on how high she is? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, you're 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 all you're essentially sitting on like the roof of a one story house, so you can still see him. And I, I think Finn would have a vested interest in watching him in particular. So yeah, Finn definitely notices. Um, I tap Moose's shoulder. Hey, mm. uh, let me, uh, let me get down. I'm gonna keep an eye on my little friend here. Mm, we doing it the subtle way, or we doing it the show biz way? Yeah, let's try for subtle. Mm, yeah, no fun. Fine. <laughs> fine. We can do the showbiz way if you want. He goes, all right, I give you the boost and you do the flip, eh? All right. And you tell me how Finn dismounts as he holds his hands up to shoot you up into the air. What does she do? Um, She kind of crouches down in his hand. And as he lifts her up, she does like a nice three-quarter turn and lands gracefully in the dirt next to Brother Uriah. Oh. Oh. Very, very impressive. Oh, well, thank you. I I just wanted to check on you. You seem you seem a bit well, it's more like the child I met than this cleric you've become. Being back here brings back the memories as if it were yesterday. I think mm. I may have repressed many of them. That that night was not pleasant, as well you know. I do. Though I've seen many horrors, it, it did stick with me quite a while, but I'm glad to see that you're all right. And she actually yes. offers her arm to Brother Uriah. He gratefully takes it. Brother Uriah, give me... Uh, a wisdom check, not a save. Just you roll and, and add your wisdom to it. Uh, let's see here. Did I go through? Uh, I'm, I can't actually see it because of the screen I'm on, so just tell me what you got. Oh, here we are. That is a natural one, I believe. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Successfully rolled to disbelieve. The brother Uriah is you sort of look around for a second, trying to hold on to Finn's voice. You feel your mind drift away for a moment and you see her. You see her again from the same person from all those years ago. It was a little girl. Beautiful ringlet curls and a bright blue dress holding a sprig in a wolf's bane. I know where there's candy. They hide it in the woods so that we won't get to it, but come with me. Come on. I'll show I, you I, where it is. I, I'm not sure. Uh, the, the others, I should stay with candy. It's a, Yes, and I'm scared to go by myself. I need someone big and strong to protect me. Please, will you come with me? Uh, well, uh, uh, 
I, I suppose we could find someone big and... Oh, you mean me. I um, do! Yes. And she grabs your hand and starts running and running and running. And then Finn. Yes. In the past, you see this little boy being tugged along by something you can't see and let out into the woods. And you know exactly that's a one-way trip. Mm-hmm. And as you rush out to grab this little boy, Uriah, you see this towering brown elf standing over you with a hint of fangs coming out as she reaches out and grabs you by the collar. Oh, oh, please, please, I, I've done nothing. I'm not going to hurt you. And I start just pulling him away because he's a child. <laughs> As you pull him back, you see that same little girl turns and looks at you and she gives you a huge smile and her eyes flash red for a second and goes, almost gotcha. And you're back, you're right. Huh. Yes, it, uh, I shudder to think what might have happened to me if you had not intervened. Oh, unfortunately, I know all too well what would have happened to you, Uriah. Yes, sir. Uh, the darker corners of my imagination have dwelt on it many times over these last years. Mm, better your imagination than what I know for fact. Indeed. Are you all right? Yes, as I say, it's just being back here again. How many children were not as lucky as I? This place, the carnival, I know it is your home, but it seems to attract malign forces. Fen looks very serious at that question. More than I would like to know. I just happened to be in the right place in the right time. Maybe it was Providence. Maybe it was just my patrol. But for what it's worth, I'm glad I saved a small human boy that day. As am I. Valentine, give me perception with advantage. I muted myself in the middle. That's a 16. You very much clock that exchange. You clock him looking around, looking sort of towards the edge of the camp, visibly like he saw a ghost. Like... <laughs> and heard what he said. Noted. Uh, OOC, everyone. I'm about to start yelling, so adjust your headphones um, accordingly. <laughs> and as you all are standing there sort of taking in this scene, you hear, Welcome to the carnival! Step up! One and all, I'm Tyndall the Barker, the amazing soulless man. Born with no soul, folks, it is a terrible affliction, and for but a few copper I will tell you my tale of woe. There is Alti the Werehair, the fastest dancing, fastest rapping Werehair performer that you ever did see. You might not know that Werehairs exist, I assure you, they are quite real friend and it is also a terrible tale that alti bravely makes the most of there is amelia the vampire death defying acrobat you must see it to believe it her undead feats of skill on the trapeze right there inside of the big top for but a few copper you can see her expand her undead leathery wings and fly hither and yon. Charlotte the fire eater. Her very blood bursts into flames. Burn the man's eyebrows off right in front of you. I've seen it. Don't try and touch her or steal a kiss or you shall meet your doom. Honestly, don't try and steal a kiss from anyone here at the carnival because that will get you on the wrong side of the boss lady which you did not want to be, friends. I'm only soulless. That'll leave you headless. There's 
the organ grinder. You can place a wager to bet on what his dancing animals are. The fluffy, scaly things of all manner of providence. Perhaps some of them might have arisen outside of the eyes and the wills of the gods. But perhaps you might win some coin if you can best the organ grinder in his riddle. Celessa the snake, dancer in animal tamer extraordinaire. She has a collection of rare serpents. She herself was born a snake, magically transformed into an elf. You never seen anybody have a way with the serpents like Celessa. There's also the Hall of Horrors for those of you that have a stout constitution. I assure you, Pakali's pickled punks will perturb the most powerful among us. I must say I ran out of P-words. Apparently alliteration is a function of the soul. But enjoy yourselves here at the carnival. Keep your purse closed and your minds open. Born <laughs> without a soul, you say? Ah! I was my mother traded it for dark infernal power before I was born. I don't believe you. You don't? Well, look hence, and he looks, points to a mirror right next to him, and you see yourself in the mirror, you don't see him. He doesn't have a reflection. Ah! 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 A fine trick. A fine trick. It's are you trying to imply that Tyndall the Baka is pulling a fast one on the patrons of our fair carnival? Oh, no. I'm simply saying that you're bamboozling everyone. <gasps> Bamboozled. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> let me begin again, young lady, because it is not in my best interest to get on the wrong side of patrons, I assure you, as my friend Finn can attest, I am quite soulless, and I don't know how else to prove it to you if the testimony of your own eyes is insufficient. So much so, I, and you see, he turns and he looks at Valentine, and he stops mid-sentence when he looks at her, and goes, ah, uh-huh, huh. huh. A bargain for your soul, huh? Well, at least in my case, it was my mother that, that, that did such a thing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Eh. You, uh... You're terrible. Never seen, uh, never seen your like before, ma'am. Uh, from whence do you hail? Me? Yeah. I've been traveling for a while now. It's not really anywhere I would consider home at this time. He looks at Nahara and Valentine, and he's like, I suspect the three of us have journeyed similarly. Hmm. Mm. Perhaps. I'd yeah. like to see your Hall of Horrors. <sighs> Excellent. And he extends an arm to you. He's like, I'll take it. Tatiana immediately tries to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress, are you yes. sure? I mean, when in... Missed. Hey, uh, why don't you bring a holy man here to watch over you? You there, and the, the stout fellow with the shield. Would you be willing to accompany this lady, these ladies, through the Hall of Horrors? Brother Uriah, don't you wish to experience the Hall of Horrors? Uh, I most certainly do not, but if my assistance is needed, I shall provide with Ezra's help. Oh, when, maybe you should accompany me then. I have a few questions. I've never been to carnival before. All this smoke, mirrors, do we trust? No, no. but it should be fun. Eremos leans oh. down. Eremos leans down and he says, The angel speaks the truth to you. She do. Don't trust, simply enjoy. It's my life motto of being ah, quite timeless with you. 
Hey, later, you come by me boots. I got one of me own, you know. You do it a test of strength. Perhaps you might be able to swing me mallet proper, huh? I would not want to embarrass you. <laughs> he looks at Finn and he goes, I like this one. I do. I like this one. I get toe to toe with him and just look up at him and smile. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's going, ooh. <laughs> yes, Finn. That's right. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So what shall I do while you all are experiencing the Hall of Horrors? You're not coming with? I uh, plan to just enjoy myself out here, but if you just honestly need me, I was, I could come along. I realize I did say that all very quickly and in dramatic carnival Barker fashion, but basically what he said is there is Tyndall the Barker, who is the soulless man, uh, Alti the Werehair, Amelia the Vampire, Charlotte the Fire Eater, the Organ Grinder, and Celessa the Snake are the primary exhibits, the, the performers that are out right now. And there is, of course, the Hall of Horrors. Horrors. I can never enunciate that word quite properly. That's when my Arkansas comes out. Hall of <laughs> Horrors. <laughs> Uh, he Brother said, Uriah, no, there's no difference. <laughs> Brother Uriah, even though he doesn't have any spell slots left, is still, he's grasping his holy symbol very tightly and just muttering to himself, Ezra is my shield and my light in the darkness. She watches over us from the mists and entered into them to protect us. Very well, I, I, I think I am ready. Well, when he, when well, he opens uh, his eyes, he just sees me like <laughs> extending my hand out. And while he's praying, I'd like to speak in tongues in his head, please. <laughs> so dirty. Yes. Uh, Brother Uriah, give me a wisdom save. That's a wisdom save, yes? Yes, actual wisdom save this time. Well, this time, it's a dirty 20. You hear the words, but you're aware that they're being injected into your mind, uh, Brother Uriah. You're, you're, you're aware someone around here is playing a little trick on you. But Valentine, you find you start speaking in his head in a language that you didn't recognize. And yet you suddenly know. Can I identify what it is? You are aware that you're speaking under common. Excellent. <laughs> Brother Uriah, you are able to steel your, yourself against these intrusive thoughts of this strange place. And sure enough, this angelic presence stands extending a hand to you. It's just for fun. Of course. But do keep in mind where we are. That's fair. He takes her hand. Desmond, as you see the, the Barker, uh, Tyndall, is escorting Valentine off, like very colorfully borderline high-stepping as he walks with her, and Nahara and Brother Uriah falling after, and presumably Tatiana not wanting to let her mistress out of her sight. What is Desmond doing? Desmond is quietly following, watching, because he doesn't trust any of this. He doesn't trust the people in the carnival, and, like, he just doesn't trust anything happening. He knows that he can't trust himself. Uh, he's still kind of, like, frazzled from the idea that he woke up bloody when, as far as he knows, he's had full control of his lycanthropy for years. So for him to wake up confused is not a normal thing so he is just still kind of like reeling in that but not wanting to show that so he's just kind of like following behind the party like quietly at a close enough distance where if it goes down he's there but like he doesn't like anything about this entire place desmond give me a wisdom save 17. 
you are aware that practically, you know, it's been maybe two hours since you woke up covered in blood. It's difficult to say because time seems to be passing strangely here. And yet, almost in spite of yourself, you feel yourself kind of letting your guard down. And then it's almost like when you fall asleep and you know you can't. And you're like, no, 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 I'm awake. 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 Oh, man, she is eating fire. Wait, wait, hang on. Wait, no, this place is messed up. This place is messed up. Oh, that burlesque show is legit. Like, it's like <laughs> your, it's almost like your hackles keep going down and you have to consciously put them back up again. He's still going to follow everybody, just confused. And, and but he, he's not going to be by himself. Finn, as you see them all kind of heading towards the Hall of Horrors with alternate levels of enthusiasm, what is Finn going to do? Uh, Finn is going to uh, give a nod to her half-giant friend and then um, fall in line next to Desmond. He just looks over and just you know this place. Hmm, I do. Why is it that I am concerned? And then a moment later, I want nothing more than to take in the sights. Hmm, be mindful. The mists, let alone the carnival, can get you to let your guard down and wisp you away. And don't, don't take my silence for complicitness as the others accused you. I'm keeping an eye on them for that treachery. Thank you. We were I appreciate there. the insight. You're welcome. Just be on your guard. Don't sign anything in blood. And for what it's worth, my name does carry weight amongst the carnival. Should anyone give you a hard time, remind them that you're here, you are here as my guest. Duly noted. I saw that weight get pulled around when you just hopped on Aramos's shoulder like nothing happened. And he was happy to put you up there. So I figured you're a big shot around here. So I hmm. appreciate that. You could say that, but let's keep that between us, eh? Keep what between us? Nothing. Nothing at all. Is it kept cool. between them? <laughs> um, <laughs> I see Valentine's going to get it. But just give me perception with advantage, I'm Valentine. I'm just curious. I'm just wondering. <laughs> That's a dirty 20. Valentine, is your sort of walking and... Uh, Tyndall has stopped yelling as loudly uh, right next to you, but you realize he probably spends so much time yelling, he doesn't know that he's a loud talker. Mm -hmm. Basically, I just came for myself with that comment. Ooh. You, you do sort of take in this exchange, and you hear in your mind Tregram speak up again. Well, what a colorful assemblage. They will all be so helpful in your work going forward. You have chosen quite well, Valentine. You are clever as well as shrewd. Am I getting along better than I thought? I only live to serve. I'm not going to react to the conversation at all. I'm just going to keep walking. I'm just, <laughs> I pride myself in being a good listener. Mm, as do I. <laughs> but yes, you absolutely clock that exchange between the two of them. <laughs> Valentine. That's all. You... Is there, so <laughs> is there a way for Finn to note what's happening? That Valentine's listening to you? That, yeah, she's being, a, she's eavesdropping. Give me 
perception with disadvantage, because as we've established, she is quite good at this, and now she has help. And Valentine, give me deception. I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is another dirty 20. <laughs> the exact so same roll, different dice. Social. Since you made me take disadvantage, it's only a 12. Social girl is social. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're aware all of their heads are on swivels. Uh, you know, you're you're accustomed to seeing, if anything, Finn, you notice these outlanders probably adjust sooner than most. Like, Brother Uriah clearly looks freaked out, but you kind of know why he's freaked out. Nahara seems more reserved, but... The other three seem like they're kind of like, well, all right, we're at the carnival now. <laughs> and it's kind of pretty quickly into it. Oddly, almost. Yeah, she makes a she makes a mental note of it. And when she gets a chance to be around those just of the carnival, she's going to uh, sit down and have a think with her contemporaries. As everyone's walking to the Hall of Horrors, Tatiana is going to peel off distracted by a glimpse at Amelia the vampire doing her death-defying acrobatics. As she, she's following behind and the group is sort of pulling ahead. Oh, what is this? You very much hear the crowd inside. Is it, oh, oh, you know, thinking she's not going to reach. Uh, as she's tumbling through the air, not going to catch it in time. Uh, but you hear like the swoons coming up and you do look and you see she's right over there in the big top. You could very easily turn and go that way. I'll catch up. I, I don't know if anybody's paying attention because I was kind of behind, but <laughs> I, I'm i just impressed by, I mean, it, it, it's a skill that I sort of have being quick on my feet. And so I've got to see someone who's better at it than me. Excellent. Uh, Desmond, I would say you and Finn, especially since you made a point of saying you were bringing up the rear, very much see Tatiana kind of peel off and look in the direction of this other tent and start heading that direction. And you do hear the swells of the audience coming from, the, ah, you know, coming from inside. And Finn, you know, a hundred percent that's where Amelia's performing. Hmm. We're supposed to stay together. Could we be worried if she's in there alone? Have you met Tatiana? Touche. And Desmond just kind of like starts walking toward the door to see if he can find where she went. You're um, gonna I just call I just yell out, We'll catch up with you. Go. Hmm. All right. Tatiana doesn't even hear it. Tunnel vision. <laughs> so am I hearing Tatiana, Desmond, and Fan are heading towards the big the big top where Amelia's performing as Valentine, uh, Nahara, and Brother Uriah are continuing on to the Hall of Horrors? I assume mm -hmm. this is going to be much like going to a Halloween haunt where Brother Uriah is being forced to go first into every room. <laughs> uh I intimately identify with how Brother Uriah feels about all this. Uh, <laughs> as you guys get close, um, this is the second largest tent that you've seen here. It is, it is, you know, two thirds of the size of the big top. Um, the the big top, and it is black. Um, and what was probably once really nice, uh, but again, it is worn and frayed, as all things here are. And outside, there is a sign that says, uh, Professor Pakali, written outside. And then underneath that, in much larger letters, Hall of Horrors. Brother Uriah, you know that name when you read Pakali. Pakali. Give me a wisdom check. Just straight up wisdom. That's a 15. You know that name from back home. It's 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 on it's on the tip of your tongue. You're like Pacoli. Professor. Professor Pacoli. Um, I rack my brain. Uh, 
is he connected in some way to the, uh, the, the Bratislava Institute? There was a Professor Pakali from the Br Bratislava Institute who, as you recall, left in disgrace. Some say cast out by Azalin Rex himself, but surely that can't be true because anyone Azalin casts out doesn't come back. But there was such a man. How very odd. Do you know I, this man? Yes, yes. There was a, something of a scandal at a, a place of learning uh, in my native land of Darkon. Uh, this, this man was chastised by the authorities and uh, by our king, uh, who is rather unforgiving. Oh. And he somehow made his way here, where we are right now, about to enter his Hall of Horrors? Yes, yes, it's, it's very odd. Uh, most people who fall afoul of the government of uh, my land uh, tend not to survive the experience. How intriguing. Yes. Rather Shall unnerving. we? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> and uh, I like, kind of, I take my wings and like, as we're walking together, just kind of like envelop our, just, just a little, little, it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> cloaking with the wings thank you <clears throat> uh nahara and valentine both give me perception checks mm -hmm. 18 16 okay one second here let me check something Uh, Nahara, the moment you're like, oh, yes, well, um, let's go. Just inside the tent, just around the corner, you see something very small go, huh? hey, huh? <laughs> and take off running inside the tent. Do I know what it was? What kind it, of creature? It's you caught just the tiniest glimpse of it. So much so Valentine didn't see it at all. Hmm. Very strange people in this land. <laughs> I think that's the point. What what you mean? Well that little laughing fellow laughing came out fellow. very small, giggled hmm. and then ran off. What? Did Brother Did Uriah it? notice that? Uh, Brother Uriah, I'm going to say you were racking your brain about Professor Pacali. Your thoughts were elsewhere. Oh, uh, well, uh, laughter is, uh, it's never usually a good sign in these parts. Oh. Is anything ever really good? No, no. Even when they meant to be, such as laughter and joyous occasions freshly baked bread though i suppose the bread might be poisoned definitely not intended joyous occasions wow okay all right uh well it's probably nothing but do you all uh, head I'm on ready. in <laughs> yes as you... i, I... Yes. I do wish you had not voiced that opinion out loud, because when someone says out loud that it's probably nothing, it invariably turns out to be something. Mm. <laughs> You're a very superstitious man, aren't you? Uh, superstitious. Well, <laughs> this is a superstitious land. Well, I assure you, it's probably nothing. Oh. <laughs> 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 Just... <laughs> when Shall we? Is you all make your way inside. It is, of course, a very dramatic entrance um, where you sort of walk into a darkened area and can kind of go to the left or to the right. And as even as you turn your head inside, you see cases in cages of all manners of creatures. Uh, some of them seem like they're floating 
suspended in liquids of some sort. Some of them are laying um, in beds of old hay. Uh, some of them seem like they've been taxidermied and pinned up. And one of the things that is floating in the bottle, as you look at it, opens its eyes and turns and looks at you. Meanwhile, over in the big top, <laughs> as you are approaching and you hear the, the cheers and the elation going up inside, Tatiana, as you come walking up, a very gro gruff dwarf is sort of sitting on a stool and just says, Three copper. Oh, uh, yes. For me, ah, uh, my friends have come. Three coppers ahead. Not for Finn, though. Hey, Finn. You, you say inside, uh, there is this woman is an acrobat. Yeah. Yes. She's a vampire. She is. Yes, 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 yes. That's fine, but she will fly through the air, yes? No, nah, she's doing it right now, she is. And you hear the, hey, coming from inside. Finn, can we, can we, can we, we go? Yeah, just put it on my docket, both of them. <sighs> oh, wait, well, some friends of yours in. Yeah. Oh, we might still manage to have a couple seats right down front then. You get it flying right over your head, you will. Mm. He's good to know powerful people. And Fen just, just gives him a, a nod and starts... She's muttering on her breath about vampire. <laughs> he, he looks at you and goes, Oh, Fen, we still on for cards later, huh? Of course. You owe me drinks. Ah! Just, uh... Bring your coin purse, and we'll clean you out this time. I'm due. My luck's bound to turn, I think. Oh, sure. <laughs> As you all push past the tarp, sure enough, you see uh, going up about 50 feet into the air. It is much taller in here than you thought as the, the big top arcs upwards. There are two platforms... And, and in between, there are two um, bars hanging on ropes. And you see an incredibly, almost impossibly slight woman. She is ashen white. Her hair is raven black and pulled back into a ponytail uh, behind her. And as you look up, she looks down at the two of you being es escorted down to the VIP. And she looks down at you very severely and goes, <laughs> and you see she's got very large fangs in her mouth. And all of the crowd goes, Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Fen is unfazed and gives her a hiss right back. <laughs> you see she turns and she just like nods curtly and stands and holds her arm up and swings out over and sure enough she lets go and flips in midair and reaches for the other bar and misses <gasps> and immediately starts to plummet straight towards I run the to ground. catch her is you are running towards her to catch her and she's sprawling and screaming and you hear the audience ah, ah, thinking they're about to watch her imminent death. Sure enough, you hear in two huge pair, a pair of two huge bat wings unfolds from her back and she flies back up and continues the flip in midair and then catches the second bar and continues across and flips to the other platform and stands up. And everybody underneath is, ah, hey! is there like some sort of barrier between the audience and the center of the ring? Because I think I'm sort of halfway over it. And, <laughs> yeah, ah, mm, mm -hmm. that is part of the show. I know. <laughs> I want to go back next to Fen, and he's very you embarrassing. Too many people see. Yes, everyone saw you. Oh. 
Thank you for uh, not um, mincing words, I suppose. <laughs> you well, would you rather I lie? Ah, is true. You are always truthful. Can appreciate that for you, friend. From high on the platform, as she's like bowing, you see she reaches down and picks up a black rose and sniffs it and throws it down to you, Tatiana. I catch it. <laughs> I look at it and I look at her. What does she know, I wonder? And she like gives you just like a small nod and then immediately like jumps back onto the trapeze and like goes back and doing more twists and contortions. What is Desmond doing during all of this, watching all this happen? Desmond's just watching, just, he's not really wild, but it's still like impressive. And then he sees the wings and he's just, just kind of like, okay, that's, that's interesting. But he kind of turns into a werewolf at night, so it's not like he's <laughs> he's blown away by like somebody having animal features. He's just like, okay, cool. It's, it's not just me. Uh, but he he did watch the the rose exchange, and he was just kind of curious. Is just, you're watching this? You feel a presence that is next to you all of a sudden that wasn't there mere seconds ago. And you feel an arm as somebody sort of just like presses up against you. And she just says, Ooh, you're strong. And who are you? And he just kind of looks. You mm. see what looks just like a beautiful half elf. Uh, she's got curly hair that almost frames her face that goes out as much as it falls down. And she's got a cup in her hand that is half empty. And she goes, I'm nobody or whoever you want me to be. He's just going to chuckle. <laughs> I doubt that very much. <clears throat> well, this is a place of wonders and anything you wish can be yours. Someone tells me I shouldn't be making wishes here. She looks both ways and she says, Isolde doesn't like it when I do business inside, but if you want to take a walk with me, I'm sure you'll discover something unforgettable. And he just kind of sits there for a second. And he remembers back to Fen saying, you shouldn't be alone. And he's just like, Nah, I think I'll take it in the show. I appreciate the offer, though. Hmm. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take it in with you, and maybe we'll find something else in common. If you want to sit there, go for it. <laughs> she goes, I like a challenge. What's your name? Desmond. What's yours? Call me Rose. Rose. Okay. In his, in his mind, he's just like, does he remember the rose on Tatiana's back? I mean, it's visible. She's right next to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like, yeah. mm -hmm. So in his mind, he's just like, okay, rose on her back, black rose with the vampire rose. He didn't say anything about out loud. He's just thinking it like, okay, it's a lot of flowers, but Okay. He's like, it's a pleasure to meet you, Rose. Mm. I assure you the pleasure's all mine, Desmond. Meanwhile, back in the Hall of Horrors, horrors, you hear a voice coming from further inside. Says, you, you mustn't hesitate them. It will be the rest of the night before I have to appease them. Um, steal yourselves. They do smell fear. Oh, they uh, also smell. <laughs> yes, I, I apologize. I, I lift the flaps to air out the place in the evenings. You know, business being what it is, I can't just allow every gawker to gaze upon my pickled punks. That's fair. 
course, uh, uh, Professor. I assume. Uh, what was the uh, what was the last name again? Uh, he is uh, Professor Pacoli. Professor Pacoli, I presume. Uh, yes. Uh, no. Come, come, come in. Don't be afraid. Uh, yes, of course. Oh. Um, I just kind of like push him in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fascinating uh, 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 exhibition you have here. Valentine. Mm -hmm. Give me a perception check. Uh, it's not very good. It's, uh, it's a six. There's a lot happening in this room, Valentine. Yeah. There's, there's a... Fair. There's a, there's a lot happening. And you see, as you sort of like look around, Tyndall leans over and just sort of pats your hand and he's like, don't worry, I shan't let one of them bite you, but do not attempt to scratch them. Even the most cuddly of them, I assure you, definitely bites. Good. I don't know that I caught your name, by the way, ma'am. Valentine. You are of the elven persuasion, yes? Something like that. Do you herald from these lands? I've not seen one of your countenance before. No, it's my first uh, visit. Hmm, yes. Well, the carnival is definitely an excellent first stop, although I assure you, you will be disappointed by every other spectacle to follow hence. I'm certain. He sort of looks at you for a moment and he lowers his voice and he says, I've been doing this a long time, young lady, and I know a kindred spirit when I see one. I'm sure you have a number of skills that you might be able to apply in an organization such as this. I don't tend to make a habit of taking work from someone who asks my name and then still refers to me as young lady. So I'd like to just see the show if you don't mind. Duly noted. I shan't repeat that mistake again. And he just nods. I'd bet not. Let's go. <laughs> As you guys come in there, you hear again, rustling in ominous grunts and growls from these things. Most of them are fairly small, um, about the size of, you know, smaller than a baby, but some of them are almost nearly as tall as a man. And they are in various states. And as you look at them, they are toothy and spiny, and there's just teeth and claws on all of them. And you do see a man that comes out and he is wearing what you immediately recognize as a professor's uniform from the Bratislava Institute in, in Darkon. But it is definitely worn and stained and clearly has been patched many times. And he comes out and he's like, eh, mm, mm, eh, oh, something about you all is agitating them. Eh. You, sir, uh, from whence do you hail? Um, from Darkon, as a matter of fact, sir. I recognize your robes. You're affiliated with the Bratislava Institute, are you? <coughs> mm. uh, I, I am on a bit of a sabbatical, yes. Um, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's on the road um, uh, cataloging specimens, and um, the carnival was uh, kind enough to take me on, and we had a confluence of interests um, as I collect my specimens, and they place them on display, and, and we have a healthy understanding. Yes. Indeed. Mm. Um, I wonder, when you found yourself on the road, was it at the, uh, shall we say, the request of the authorities? <clears throat> mm. uh, whatever are you attempting to imply, sir? <laughs> it's just that your name seems uh, somewhat familiar. I, I assure you, I am not affiliated with law enforcement. Nahara. When you see this man sort of start to panic a bit and hesitate 
in the back of your mind, you hear, he did it. He's guilty. Did what? Also, what? It doesn't say anything else. Uh, I just try not to react outwardly and, oh, you're running from something. Uh, no, I am, I am doing no such thing. I am a very reputable scientist from the Bratislava Institute. Um, everyone in Darkon has clearly heard of me, as you can see. And my work here is incredibly, incredibly valid and necessary. <clears throat> of course, I, I, no one meant to suggest otherwise, sir. Uh, these biological specimens are, are quite impressive. Mm, yes. yes. Yes, Professor Piccoli's pickled punks. Yes, yes, and, and you are a, a fan of alliteration, I see. <laughs> As all <laughs> learned people are, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, Nahara, you were saying? How long did you say you've been here? Oh, <laughs> um... Some time. A number of seasons. Um, oh, yes, uh, I suppose uh, if I wait too terribly long, um, I will uh, perhaps to um, become to um, risk my tenure at the Institute. But no, no, surely um, uh, someone of my stature, and especially when they see what I have returned with, uh, the specimens I've collected, one of a kind all, one of a kind. It, yes, how did you procure all these specimens? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a trade secret, young lady. You see, that in the myths, I, I, I place a number of traps. Uh, I've come to understand the psychology of these wee beasts. Um, and I'm able to lure them out and capture them. And uh, I study them while they live. And then when they die, I simply preserve them. <laughs> I see. Well, it must have taken you a very long time, seeing as there's so many creatures here. Valentine, you notice over to your left, out of your peripheral vision, a small something crawling on the floor towards you. Uh, you are muted. Does it look like the other creatures that we've been kind of surrounded by, or is it something else? So no two of these things are exactly the same, uh, but it definitely seems of a similar ilk. I'd like to try and cast friends on it. <laughs> uh, what, what is the save it needs to be? So it essentially just gives me advantage on charisma checks towards it. Ah, because uh, it's not like charm person, so it has to be more humanoid. And this is um, the thing that after it wears off, they become antagonistic, correct? If they're hostile towards me. Perfect. If, if you know, capital I-F, if, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's to say? Who indeed. So uh, I would just like to kind of lean over, but not quite bending down towards it to, mm -hmm. to get a better look. You see this thing when you raise your hand and whisper your incantation. When you see it is crawling and it stops and it sort of stands up like <laughs> and it's maybe eight inches tall and it is fleshy and veiny and it has no eyes. Uh, but it has extra teeth that just fit oddly in its mouth. Like, as you watch its jaws open and close, like, they don't line up at all. And it's... <laughs> Give me, Valentine, an insight check. All right, for insight. All right, that's going to be a 17. You, 
if there's one thing you understand, Valentine, is human frailty. <laughs> that, whatever that is, it just feels like desperation and fear. It's a living something. I'd like to pick it up. You see, uh, when you bend down, you see he's like, oh, mm, uh, uh, please do not touch the specimens. Oh, uh, that abominable Eremos will have uh, strong words for me. If someone else were to lose a finger here, he and his old have um, some antiquated ideas about um, um, safety in, 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 in science is such um it absolutely oh. oh go ahead valentine i just go but it's so cute and i just like shove it towards his face it does very much hop into your hand and brother uriah and nahara you all see it now again it is about eight inches tall in uh, it is all it is almost like uh, just a mass of muscle out of context with no eyes and what when a, what a curious creature when you hold I go, it i go to pet it <laughs> When you hold it towards his face, he is like, ah, no, no, away from me, away from me. No, yeah, no, no, please. Uh, so easily scared for a keeper of horrors. Fascinating. Uh, they're to be kept under proper lock and key. Um, Seems like you've made a mistake with this one now, haven't you? Uh, it may on occasion. On occasion, they slip their bonds, <laughs> and when they do, uh, they must be tended to. Uh, Nahara, give me... First, give me insight. All right. Da, da, da. 16. That thing's wrong. That thing's wrong. At first, you're kind of like, yeah, all right, wait, hang on. <laughs> mm. Mm, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I wasn't aware that this was a petting zoo. <laughs> Nahara, you get a feeling that you didn't think you were capable of anymore. There was a time in a life that is a memory of a memory, an echo of an echo, that you start to eradicate impure things it was your job to crush sin in as much as you could that was another person in another time but something somehow like remembering a sin from your childhood immediately bringing you back to a different place this makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and when it does all of these things start to make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up What are these creatures? <laughs> they're they're Presipocalis, uh, pickled punks. Um, and he pulls up a cage and puts it down and like kicks it with his foot and slides it towards you, Valentine. He goes, uh, Mr. Uh, Valentine, um, please deposit the creature in the proper receptacle. I'll open it up. <laughs> Is the cage like... What, what's the size? What are the conditions like? Just out of curiosity. Oh, it's jank, like everything here. Uh, I mean, it is of worn, warped wood, ru rusted bars, some moldy straw, um, but a thick lock. <laughs> put it, put it back. He's sweaty for a reason. Oh, but I love making people sweaty. <laughs> Place it down. Um, and when you put it down, it does. It very much goes like. Oh, and it goes to leap at you, but he slams the lid shut on it. Yeah, it was about that time. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Yes, uh, peace be upon you, little friend. Peace be upon you. Uh, uh, Professor, mm, Professor, you, mm. you had already said that you had named these things your pickled punks, but uh -huh. how did you come to acquire them? Uh, Uriah's going to try an insight roll on his answer. Roll, okay. Uh, roll the insight, and he says, "Oh, I, as I assure you, um, eh, 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 we, bro, 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 brother, brother, Uriah from Darkon, that, that, um, <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, I set traps in the mist. And um, as the mist come to and fro, uh, and when the mist depart, uh, I have acqu- I acquire my... Uh, acquire my samples thusly. Uh, <clears throat> I'm all right. Mm, yes, uh, quite. Never better. Deep knee bends. They are good for the constitution. And he does, like, do a couple real quick. Uh, and, that was the 22 mm, on the insight roll. He is absolutely lying. Mm, I see. I see. Can I just give a side eye to Brother without saying anything? <laughs> I just want to give a side eye to Brother Hiraya because we both kind of asked him this question and he's dodged. He, he takes a step towards you, Brother Uriah, and he says that <clears throat> uh, I am a man of humble means, uh, but not without means. Um, if uh, if you have been sent here from Darkhan, um, perhaps in my um, <clears throat> shall we call it pursuit. Um, were I to impress upon you, and he just moves his hand across the a nearby glass countertop that is dusty and worn with horrible things inside, and five gold Darkon coins are on it, a not insignificant sum, to impress upon you, um, to have forgotten that you encountered me here. <laughs> I would look upon it as a favor to a to a fellow kinsman for the glory of King Aslan. Mm, yes, all hail, Aslan Rex. Uh, all hail. Yes. Mm. <clears throat> uh, perhaps you are not aware, sir, but Darkon has fallen on hard times. Nonetheless, I shall gratefully accept these coins as a donation to the Church of Ezra, be assured they will be put to use aiding the poor. As you reach your hand out, he puts his hand on your hand and he says, what manner of dark times in Darkhan? Darkhan is the greatest of all kingdoms in all lands. <laughs> Everyone knows King Aslan is the greatest of all rulers. Indeed, Darkhan was mighty, but now fractured, perhaps beyond repair. They called it the hour of ascension. And now the king's tear hangs in the sky, and no one knows of the king himself. The hour of ascension has occurred. They say it is struck, it is spoken of in whispers, yet there are those in the church who who believe that Aslan himself may have had something to do with it. <laughs> this is um curious, curious, curious tidings. Yes, yes. And he starts pacing. Um, Valentine, give me perception with advantage again. Uh, you are muted, ma'am. We love an advantage. And he's like, oh, the hour of ascension has struck. 21. <laughs> oh, this, uh, it, it might be possible to return to Darkon after all. It might be possible to return. As he's pacing, Valentine, yes. al- along his lower back, you see a mass undulate underneath his robes. As he's like, pacing i just kind of like to like aggressively slap the back of his shoulder and grab onto it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i'll just message something hiding in there you see he looks at you for a second and then his eyes fall over to tyndall and you see tyndall just very slowly shakes his head no And then, in his mind, he's like, Tendal can't hear you in here. Like so many with the carnival, um, it is a collection of melancholy outcasts and the downtrodden. Um, I perhaps did not entirely leave Darkon of my own volition. Um, mm, Um, but um, I would like to return if um, uh, what uh, Brother Uriah says is true and the hour of ascension has struck. Perhaps I can return and take up my real work again. <clears throat> and your, your real work is... Meanwhile, back in the big top, the <laughs> as this um, 
display is going on, you, Finn, hear a voice whispering in your ear, like someone is standing right next to you, a co- method of communication you're accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Finn, I've been informed that you've brought some colorful outsiders here to visit. You've even paid for some of them to enter into the tent. Anything that I need to know about? Who's talking to Finn? This is Isolde. Well, I had a bit of an adventure, and the miss brought us here, and one of my companions is someone I think you really would like to meet. He's Hmm. touched by the wolf, and he's out for blood for his, well, I'd barely call her a sister-in-law, but she lay slain before one night went to his brother. He seeks vengeance. He seeks to right a wrong. Absolutely. What of the others? Are any of them similarly afflicted or angry? Mm. Our Genasi friend here seems ready to fight at a moment's notice. I uh, slam my elbow into Finn and say, did you see this? Oh, this move is incredible. <laughs> ah, she's full of it. Watching the show, oblivious to the <laughs> mind's conversation. <laughs> Bring... I think... Oh, go ahead. As there are two, well, three others not with us, they are enjoying the House of Horrors. <laughs> enjoying is such a colorful way to describe it. I do not trust that man, but he has been useful. Oh, you know we trust no one here. Oh, but we do trust each other, do we not, Finn? I I do trust you, but the man, as you so generously call him in the House of Horrors, I'd sooner split him from, well, I'd sooner split him open and let him bleed out than actually trust him. Pakali is a worm, but even worms can have their uses when you're fishing. Yes. Bring these colorful visitors outside. I shall make their acquaintance in person. As you wish, ma'am. Oh, I saw the battle. You fought gloriously, but foolishly, dear Finn. It would not do to have one of my greatest lieutenants brought low by a simple skeleton with a short sword. Hmm. It was but an error in judgment, but you remember the young human I saved. What is it, two decades ago? He's the other that is in the House of Horrors. The boys return. He has. Fascinating. He's a bit scared of everything, but he will do the right thing when when asked. And I wonder what beats in his heart, truly. Well, considering his near abrupt conclusion on the plane of the living, I can understand a certain bit of hesitance. Hmm. I think there's a bit of steel in his spine yet. Bring them outside. I will bring the two with me and If Finn tries to move Tatiana, (laughs) her butt is glued to the seat. She will not budge while the show continues. (laughs) Finn, what are you doing? This show is not over yet. Oh, it's over. We have someone important to go meet. But uh, she'll be here. Uh, she lives here. Oh, but oh yeah. The, I'll, the I'll come moment with you. the moment Tatiana hesitates, even for a moment, 
you see Amelia, who is doing her performance, suddenly stops, lands, turns around, and says, And that will conclude my performance. <laughs> and everybody, hey! <laughs> like, immediately. No Des one more than Tatiana. <laughs> Desmond, you also notice that Rose is gone. You didn't see when she walked up. You didn't see when she left. She wasn't there. She's there. She's not there. No, sir, he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, presumably you three are going to make your way outside. Uh, the whole time, yeah. Finn. And then there was this part where she goes backwards, <laughs> double flip in the air. Tatiana. Yep. I've seen this act many, many times. Oh, so I should stop explaining to you everything? Yes, and just be aware that it's not that impressive when you think about it. Although Tatiana... No, I mean, I could probably do it, but... Tatiana, you never seen a real vampire before. I mean, that was a real vampire. They said as a vampire, she clearly was like ash white. She had wings. <laughs> I mean, that's a that that's clearly a vampire. Mm. That's uh, and the teeth. You see the teeth. I just she smile. Me, she gave me this rose. <laughs> I just I had to look at Tatiana and I give her the toothiest <laughs> grin, and I let her see my fangs come down. <laughs> okay, you have secrets, and I like that. Yes, but be careful you don't prick your finger on that rose. You already have one mark on you. I dropped the rose. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the Hall of Horrors, you asked him what his business is. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. um, my business is um, experimentation, and experimentation on occasion requires sacrifice. Um, you have to make... Um, expenditures of the self and on occasion of others as well for the greater good um, if my research had been allowed to continue who knows how quickly and more successfully the hour of ascension might have struck but that is all right now i can take what i have learned and what i can do and i can help darkon reach a new and greater glory what difference does it make if some people don't survive in the meantime, right? Is Makes that what every you difference. Meant? Well, this is mm. only in Valentine's head. This he doesn't oh, say sorry. this out loud. Oh, yeah. sorry, that's sorry you're saying it out loud. <laughs> you didn't know mm -hmm. that you were we were there. All right. No, no, this is in Valentine's head. Is that how you obtained the friend in your robes? <clears throat> As I said, science and experimentation require sacrifice. I have found a way to purge myself of certain um, undesirable traits. <clears throat> it is an alchemical process uh, that I would be happy to explain to you at, at some length, but um, I must ask for a favor. Could you and your associates please depart? Could you get them out of here, <laughs> please? Can I ask what's troubling you so much about my associates? <clears throat> I have not met fellow, many of my fellow Darkonians. I do not know that he means me well, and oftentimes the stories they tell about me back there may not be all that flattering. They were just simply necessary. Brother Uriah, do you have, uh, you have trouble with this guy? Trouble? Um, I, well, I, I certainly hope not, um, <clears throat> though I... I have heard things regarding a scandal at the Bratislava Institute that was, um, well, <clears throat> best left unsaid. Whatever he says I did, I did not do. Uh, wow. The stories were not particularly clear, but uh, I believe the words abominations and uh, crimes against nature were mm. mentioned. Excellent. I'd like to just cast a little mind sliver. <laughs> just a little one. Just a little unpaquito mind sliver. Just a hmm. little. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an intelligence check or intelligence save, rather. Uh, he does not make it. All right. Easy. Ah, 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 ah. And he falls. Are you all right? To his knees, and when he does, you actually see the robes on his back rip, and on his back you see. Uh, 
a head comes up on his back and goes, Well, I can see you're somewhat indisposed at the moment, Professor, so I'll just take these coins. Thank you for your donation to the church in Bezra. No, 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 you will not be leaving. And there is a good place for us to stop because oh, elsewhere, no. far through the mist, two old friends are continuing to catch up. Somewhere far away through the mist in the land of Barovia, high atop Castle Ravenloft, two old friends are reconnecting. So, Von Zarevich, you do bid Aslan Rex welcome. <laughs> of course, I do not require it. I am not so limited as to be barred from entry to the domicile I have not been invited to. Evidently not. How? Why aren't you where you belong? Oh, is it that, that I walk Barovian soil? You see, von Zarevich, rulership is often a burden, one I have voluntarily put down for the moment. <laughs> Too much for you at last, is it? My interests are greater. I have no I seek greater truths, and I have found them. Truths? Yes. Truths. Even here in this realm of shadows, one may find a bedrock, a truth, and knowledge is invaluable. I don't know what you think you're looking for, but if you had found it, you would not be as you are. You would be here facing me in the flesh, ready to finish what we start. Really? Or perhaps you are merely now beneath my notice. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> you are perceptive. My, my journey has only begun, but its end nears. Not so you, you I think, von Zarevich. How fares Baruf? As you see, much the same as I left it then. <laughs> but there are those who find their way to my dungeons, who whisper, who say secrets, perhaps to say their souls. They tell me tales of a domain without a king, a domain in chaos, in disarray, leaderless, crownless. Oh, how could it be otherwise? Aslan Rex brings order on is no longer my most prominent concern. Perhaps I shall reclaim it at my leisure. In the meantime, there are none who are strong enough to I did. There are none Rulership who are worthy. Brings with it oblig even you cannot shirk or deny. Have you, you 
<laughs> abdicated. Think of it as a working vacation. <laughs> and my work, oh, my work is mighty indeed. You shall look upon it, Monzarevich, and despair. Well, I doubt that. But be that as it may, I confess that I am curious. How? How did you do this? The hour of ascension has struck. Hmm. And the proof sits in your study. But not physically here, of course. I would think that imprudent. You are a fool, Von Zarao, for one. I think, again, if you had the courage of your convictions, this meeting wise. Mm -hmm. Perhaps but, there shall be time for future meetings. Oh, but I for now, so. but for now. We are merely old friends discussing, catching up. The others that you speak of in your dungeons, outlanders, no doubt. Mm. Tell me. I'm those who do not belong here find their way to my realm nonetheless. From other things, I hear things. Yes. And sometimes the mists themselves whisper, speak. Oh. So, a realm in chaos, leaderless, ripe for the taking. <laughs> intriguing, most intriguing. With this, the revelation that there is a land currently without a king, which is irresistible temptation to a conqueror of Strahd's status, is a good place for us to stop.